How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Knox Manning in Hollywood, taking you on another brief journey behind the scenes. Once again, we draw the curtain to watch a fragment of forgotten drama, a story of people and places already hidden in the background of destiny. Today, we shall meet a young man who thought his life had ended when he reached the grand old age of 27. But first, a word from a familiar voice. That's a man worth listening to. And now, step with me behind the scenes to a room in Washington, D.C. about 30 years ago. At a heavy, ornately carved desk, a young man sits writing a letter. His face is white and drawn, and his hand trembles as he grips the pen. Let's move closer. Perhaps we can glance over his shoulder. The lieutenant raised his head and stared out of the Washington Monument in the distance. He was angry, angry at the world, at the Navy, and most of all at himself. He turned his eyes down to the floor and focused them on his right foot. For a second, he wished that they'd cut it off, made him a real cripple instead of a vigorous, hearty man who walked with just the trace of a limp. Always just the trace of a limp. If it hadn't been for that right foot, he wouldn't be a failure now. He'd be at sea, tasting the salt air, stomping the hard deck, walking the bridge of his own ship. But no, he was an armchair officer, doomed forever to the eternity of Washington red tape. Well, he'd had enough of that. This was the end, this letter, the end of all his boyhood dreams... The end of a promising career at Annapolis, where his classmates had called him a leader in all right things. Annapolis. The lieutenant smiled bitterly. That had been the beginning of this ending. It was there he'd first injured his leg in the Princeton football game. It hadn't seemed serious at the time. It had healed successfully, only to break again in his senior year and almost prevent his graduation. That right foot, it had cursed him on his first sea duty, kept him hospitalized for months, caused his transfer from a ship of the line to the presidential yacht, and then prompted the medical board to rule that even the Mayflower was too active a duty for a cripple. The lieutenant caught his breath sharply and tightened his lips until they bruised each other. He tried to reconcile himself to being a land sailor, but it was futile. There were distant journeys to make, distant ports to visit. That was what being a sailor meant, and if he couldn't have that, he'd have nothing, nothing at all. He'd leave the Navy, find something else to do. There ought to be jobs for men with infirmities, dull, ordinary, routine, comfortable jobs... And he'd find one of them. He didn't care which. The lieutenant snatched the pen from the blotter, gripped it tightly in his quivering fingers, and scrawled a signature on the letter that lay before him. The letter that constituted his resignation from the Navy. And now, before the conclusion of our story, a word from your announcer. And so, a game right foot sent a young officer to the inactive lists, a failure at 27. It took the First World War to make a place for this handicapped man to return him to active duty... And then this very handicapped, this injured foot, pointed the way to a career where feet were unimportant. A naval career above the sea in the skies over distant lands. Who knows? Perhaps if somewhere behind the scenes a midshipman hadn't been hit hard in the scrimmage of a football game, the world might never have read the name which the young lieutenant so reluctantly scrawled on that resignation, the name of Admiral Richard E. Byrd. Now this is Knox Manning inviting you to join me again tomorrow at this same time for another journey into that dim half-light where chance and destiny lift men out from behind the scenes. This is a Hamilton Whitney radio production transcribed in Hollywood.